the future and what why do you um you have this knack and this great ability uh as far as reinventing yourself so it's kind of like around that theme but certainly whatever you wanted to talk or add to that's interesting that's really see i never think of like reinventing myself and like oh i i just you know just research and development just that constant research and development and it evolves and it shows us things like, oh, you know, we are missing that part or, mm -hmm. hey, here's something we've been doing for a long time, but here's a way to do it even more efficiently or yeah. practice it more efficiently. So that's, yeah, I'm just constantly moving forward. Interesting with the trapping program that just came out and yeah. happy to say, oops, sorry. Uh, happy to say, see, I'll take care of that for tomorrow or when, Friday. A lot, you know, got a lot of really good feedback already, and oh, we're so happy to see trapping that's done live. Like instead mm -hmm. of just talk, talking about trapping, it looks like this, and you do this, and you do this, and he does this, and you do that. Actually, showing sparring, like lots of sparring, where it's applied in trapping, not just me, but other people too. Fights that it's actually applied in, so uh, people are enjoying the concept of trapping, but in a modern, you know, an approach where you can do it against someone who is uh, like MMA based or kickboxing based. Mm. So like that example, there was a time when I realized I, I got trapping doesn't work. I've been trying it on MMA people. I've been trying it on these guys, all my trapping, whether it's Wing Chun or Filipino martial arts or sea lot. I'm just not getting it to work against guys when we're sparring and they're actually trying to mm. foil everything I'm doing. But over time, I realized, oh, it's not the, the trapping. It's how I was trying to apply it and the format of this. I go like this. I get a reference point, then I trap, and then you block like that, and I go over here, and I block that. Mm -hmm. Really hard to do. But, I didn't have much uh, success either. Like when I was during my JKD days, um, yeah. In other words, like if you threw a haymaker, you listed a response. Okay, yeah, I can work off that, you know, a bridge. But much to what you were saying, you know, previous to that. But it's interesting to hear your insight on this and far what got you success, hence leading to this program. Yeah, yeah, it's pr pretty interesting. Like one thing real quick, then we'll talk about the other things that we'll discuss Friday. Uh, just that idea of a reference point, you know you get a reference point and then you trap from the reference point. It's like, no, you don't. I mean, it can happen, but if you, we go back and we watch Bruce Lee sparring at the 1967 uh, internationals, karate internationals, mm -hmm. he applied trapping there two times. He did pox out. And both of those times, guess what? There was no reference point. He just did. He intercepted with a pox out. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference between Jun Fan Gung Fu which had a lot of the reference points in this and, and then the evolution to Jeet Kune Do, where he like, you know, he would teach the reference point as a training tool, but he wasn't saying in a fight, you get the reference point and then you go from there. It was just for economy of motion. Then he got rid of that. And then you try to do it out of uh, sparring. It's really, it's very, very interesting. But yeah, I was thinking about also discussing Battlefield Collie staff, which you were. What's that? Very down the line on that. Have you ever heard of that? I, I don't know. Who's doing that in your program? I mean, oh, there's this guy. You know, he's on the East Coast, I think. West, I don't know, one of those coasts. He's out there and he's doing that. So, oh, yeah. Is so, that, I, is, that, is that that funny guy doing all those interviews? And yeah. Thinking, he went and started this different thing. I don't know why anybody would go on an interview with this guy in the first place. You know, talk about ruining your reputation. So... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, well, I thought maybe talk a little bit about that, but I wanted to talk about Tatang and, uh, Kali that's so funny because here's two questions I got. Yes. What you get? They are both, both. Okay. I, this is so ironic. No exaggeration. The question from that came from Chad belly is on staff, which is also somebody else asked and stories about GM. Okay, we can do that. I well, I've got some stories. So some, yeah, some interesting, interesting stories. All right, so staff on it and GM. Okay, stories. beautiful.
And, and then uh, anything yeah. else you want to talk about? If people want to, while we'll we're doing it, it, they put something in the comments. Yeah, yeah, we'll right. They'll it. do that as it's going on. Stuff will come in. So how I kind of handle that is, for instance, let's just say we're onto something, and the question comes in, I'll address it right there. But if it's something we haven't talked about, not to interrupt the flow of conversation, I write it down, and I will definitely get to it for sure. Okay. Um, but I think it'd be neat. Yeah, kind of the whole, you know, again, because I, I, I think it'd be nice for folks to hear how you're constantly coming up with these new modules and reinventing mm -hmm. yourself or you're finding holes in something which maybe generates a thought and then leads to you um, coming up with these and then we can go into the trapping your your, your trapping for the well, street module that just came out which i'm well, very we interested we can if somebody wants to hear about that but uh whatever you're anything i'm up for anything but i would like to talk about tong tong yeah and, uh yeah, we'll discuss some of the staff and some of that origins and and what, you know, Battlefield Collie, we have a certain way of doing anything. It's sparring mm -hmm. based. So we'll discuss that. And then anything else uh, people want to look at as well? I think it'd be great. Yeah. And then um, what I'll do is I'm going to send you a message after we're done here. Actually, if you can, we, you have a couple minutes to hang on the bottom because a couple of things just to areas to do not go into oh yeah for sure oh i that, yeah that you got I mean, for me we can go anywhere you want i, I don't care you know yeah, there's a couple things i just know for sure i think you want to keep on the low end um okay yeah so i just want to verify that just so i don't spoil anything for you um okay well i'm you know the truth is the truth right <laughs> yeah 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 but i at least want to run it by you first before okay. hey friday i bring something up and you're like <laughs> you know yeah. This world we live in, it's so funny. We have, uh, I know, I'd, I'd rather just tell people the truth and, you know, that's the truth is the truth and that's the way it is. Oh, I have a, actually a couple uh, announcements to make on Friday too concerning some uh, interesting Filipino martial arts based seminars or uh, camp, something like that. Ooh. So we'll I'll bring that up on Friday as well. If you could jot that down, make sure I don't forget um, that. Okay, I'll get started down. talking about martial arts and I'll forget all those other things. <laughs> okay, so I'm writing down camp and seminars. Yes. Okay, future. Yes. All right. And it would uh, be very interesting. Yeah, about. speaking of camp, um, yeah, like we something we talked about, um, you know, that uh, I think you should do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So a lot of a lot of stuff to talk about. A lot of great stuff going on. <clears throat> Man, I tell you. Uh, yeah, a year ago, I was in such bad shape. <laughs> I know, but look at you now and what you're doing. You would never know. I mean, you're putting stuff out left and right. I mean, people are seeing it, and this I I wanted to kind of piggyback off the momentum of what you're doing now. You know. Yeah, it's it's really something. You know, my programs have a very long gestation period. Because I have the idea, like Battlefield Collie staff, mm -hmm. I had the whole outline, what, three or four years ago. But for me, I want to make sure it's deeper. And that's why we keep going over and going over, getting different insights and having questions that I didn't think of asking, but somebody else asked. And I go, oh, I better address that. And, uh, and just continuing the training method. And you've been very helpful with that as I've been sharing it with you. Uh, uh, so thanks for your help. Oh, yeah, I love it. It's fun. It's something, you know, I'm so glad. I, I wish I perhaps went to you sooner on that because, if, well, you know, you get caught up in doing things or you're trying to finish stuff. And the one thing that you never did and it just keeps getting put back and put back and put back. And uh, finally, you know, because I always wanted to play around with staff. I was always fascinated with it, but I never got formal training uh, up until, you know, with you. So well, it's interesting because um, from my perspective, I really enjoy doing staff. But I had an assumption that nobody was really interested in it. And but so I did it myself and I played and I had uh, uh, Jay Fujimoto. We did some yeah. staff, do some sparring and all. Uh, he's really, really good. Um, and, you know, we just had a I had I had fun with staff since Guru Dan started teaching me staff in maybe I'm guessing 88, 1988, something around there. That sounds just 88. Wow. Yeah. I know how, gosh, isn't that something? It's like a whole nother, it's a long I, time I know. ago. I'm thinking like, 
88. Jeez. 88. There are a bunch of people watching this who weren't even born in 88. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah, but I've always enjoyed it. But I just had this assumption that people want to, you know, we're more interested in stick because it's not that practical. I'm always thinking practical, you know. I mean, the truth is there could be a mop or a broom anywhere you go Ooh. and you could possibly use some of the things. But staff against staff fighting, uh, yeah. not that common these days. Yeah. But then when I, you know, just started posting a couple things just for fun, it was a surprise about how, how many other people were very interested too. So hopefully we can help uh, people on that path. Uh, so interesting. I guess I didn't realize that. that uh, so it's something you always had up here, but you... you so not officially, I guess, codified on paper, so to speak? Or? Yes. And I would spar with it and play with some things. But then I decided, okay, I, this is before I even knew that other people were interested. I said, you know, just for myself, I'm going to start, like you said, codifying it. Just look at the different concepts, the different ways, you know, the different attacks and being sneaky with it and such and such. Uh, and so I started writing this all down and uh, organizing it. Uh, but interesting, you know, you can organize it, make a curriculum, then people get stuck on the curriculum. That's why it's all sparring based, because in the end, you have to go spar to find out what's best for you. And then you create mm -hmm. things uh, that are, you know, unique to yourself as far as how you apply it, your footwork, your body movement, et cetera. So it becomes very personal, which is the way it should be. And uh yeah, then I found out people like, oh, the earrings just like, well, okay, I'll go ahead and see if I can put out a program for those people who are interested. And then you yeah. express interest and it's been, yeah, it's really, really fun, isn't it? I think so. No, no, no. I'm, and I'm glad you did. I mean, um, another a gentleman that's watching here, I'm not, I'm not sure if you're familiar with him. He's a dog brother, Badger Jones. Does a lot with his staff. Um, oh, yeah. You, great. You guys will get along great. Um, Wonderful. You know, um, yeah, I mean, that, that when you go in and fight, it gives you a different perspective. And as long as you keep that perspective, because you can go fight, understand what fighting is, and then teach things that don't work in fighting. And that happens mm -hmm. a lot. A lot of times I see that people who are very good fighters, when they teach, they go back to this, what they were taught or the how most people teach. But if we keep that fighter's perspective and say, hey, we're doing this to perform well under combat conditions, mm -hmm. then we keep a particular focus. And that's one of the great things of uh, coaching MMA and, or whatever combat sport it is. Uh, MMA is great because it's so diverse what you're doing. So, you know, when I was tra training, like say Chris Lieben for three years, and I, and, you know, a long mm -hmm. time before that I was coaching uh, people in MMA, before it was called MMA, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. again, age, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, uh, you know, it keeps you focused. You do not spend precious time showing MMA fighters who are going to go and fight in front of millions of people something that's just, oh, this is just for fun or, oh, this yeah. is just a cool thing. Oh, hey, look at this cool drill. Like, you do not have time for that. You Experimental, right? You definitely, you know. All um, on performance. Yeah. It's how can I make you fight better? absorb less damage and be able to dominate the fight and that's to me that's what i love about martial arts is doing that so in a self-defense situation we have a much better chance of prevailing awesome i mean music my ears so yeah so folks if you're watching this this will be friday at 3 p.m eastern time if you have questions for google bird you can either message him or myself and i'll be sure that they get asked um we got a bunch of folks already watching wow um you know i know Google Burton's coming on, yeah. <laughs> yeah, whoopee. <laughs> no, 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 no. Are you kidding me? No, you yeah. know, we're all just, God, I'm literally, we're all students. You know, if you, again, if you do the sparring and the fighting, yeah, you, you know, that whole th thing about, oh, I should be humble and all. No, if you do the fighting, you'll know that you have farther to go, especially if you do fighting against people who are really top class, and, and I must say, mm -hmm. I was reflecting on that recently. I've been so fortunate. You know, imagine my first instructor, or the first two instructors, Guru Dan and Asanto and Sifu Richard Bustillo. Those are my first two martial arts instructors. I know, huh? And that's at that top of the top, and you get used to that standard. Then I trained, of course, with Edgar Solite, Tatang Illustrissimo, Tony Diego, Christopher Ricketts, 
all these top people. And that helped me to realize that if I go into a particular art, I want to train it, I'm going to look for the best people possible. Yeah. It may make it more difficult for me, uh, just logistically and all, but that's what I'm going to do. So, you know, jujitsu started with Higgin Machado, uh, training with Chris Howder, one of the first American black belts, then got hooked up with Egan Inoue, who became the first non-Brazilian mm -hmm. to win a Brazilian jiu-jitsu world championship. And it was in Brazil. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. I mean, just top level athletes and, uh, yeah, it's been, now yeah, you you have a terrible time. situation, huh? In Hawaii, I mean, uh, being able to train with Marcelo, I mean, God, yeah, this how do this you is do very it? difficult. It's a horrible thing. Uh, Marcelo, uh, he's recovering from surgery right now, but no, I heard. Before, it's and, yeah, and won't be long. We'll he, he'll come over to the house and we'll roll. Even while he was in chemo, I had some other guys come over for a rolling session, and Marcelo came over to watch and coach a little bit. You know, Marcelo Garcia, best pound for pound jujitsu guy Gosh. ever. Uh, pretty much I just, don't know you, on I, I just don't know how you do it. Just, no, it's, it's very fortunate, but I must, you know, one thing I will say, I'm, I am the lucky dog. That is, that's for sure. I'm the lucky dog. That's my dog brother name. But when I have an opportunity, I go ahead and do what I need to do to take advantage of the opportunity. Yeah, they don't come around often. <laughs> yeah, when they show up, you have to do whatever you can do to, yeah. to make the best of it. And hopefully you're helping the other people involved, too. That's my goal. Yeah, always. yeah when you came to New York that time, circa 2013 or 14, I can't believe it's almost going to 10 years. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I got I have to take advantage of this, you know. You know, imagine yeah, you if I didn't. down from Connecticut to New York to take a private from me. Yes. And uh, that was just a great time, you know, and yeah. that's the thing. See, taking the extra step is somebody you want to train with. You go take that. Now, sometimes you go train with somebody that's of a very high level and you'll finish and you say, you know, we just don't get together. There was a jujitsu guy like that for me. Uh, one of my first jujitsu lessons that just didn't like the attitude. And mm. so even though I could have learned so much from this per particular individual, I decided, you know, I'm not going to because I just, the environment, I didn't yeah. like. But then I ended up finding people with great attitudes and who has a better attitude than Marcelo? Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, yeah, I mean, right. It doesn't mean it necessarily it's always something wrong with the person. It's not a good fit. It's not a good fit. I mean, don't. Yeah. You know, the one journey that you have, I mean, don't go through an experience that's not enjoyable when there's just other folks out there that you can work with. And, you know, I, I agree. And yeah. one last thing on that is like my students, I do not own my students. I encourage my students like Guru Dan has done with me yeah. the last 40 years is go and train with everybody, train with yeah. everybody you can. You know, Guru Dan, talk about his generosity and his uh, selflessness. I, you know, I was the person that he always demonstrated with at the academy. He taught 18 classes a week. I was at all 18 classes every week. I didn't wow. miss any classes, whether it was IMB Academy in the morning, the nighttime IMB Academy classes, the daytime Harbor Community College classes, self-defense mm -hmm. classes, or the Inasano Academy nighttime classes. I was at every single class. He worked very hard to get Pendecker Paul de Tours, the Sealot Grandmaster, mm. to accept me as a student. It was just backyard at that time. And he did a lot of things. And finally, after months and months of this, Pendecker accepted me. And so I got to go train there also. Mm. And uh, years later, Guru Dan and actually and his wife, Simo Paula, were, were talking. And he, he said, yeah, I, you know, I thought... You know, I thought you might just go with him and stop training with me. So here's this guy that's at every single class. I travel with him on seminars. I will, you know, be his uke all the time. Yeah. And he cared more about my well-being by saying, hey, I want you to train with this guy. But as he's doing this, he's thinking, hey, I might lose him now. He mm. may, I may not have him as a student anymore, but 
that's what's best for him. So I'm going to do what's best for him. So I just say that because that's the attitude I take. I just want what's best for my students. People will come and go, but I want them to train with everybody possible. And that makes them better. And then in the end, what's actually happens to is then they come back and they show me things sometimes like, wow, that's good. I agree. Uh, man. <laughs> yeah. I totally agree with that. If you have that attitude and I have the same attitude because if, I, I'd be hypocritical what I've done in my journey. And, and if right. I implemented indentured servitude with my students, oh no, you, you can't. I mean, think about the hypocrisy there, you know? It and, is. Uh, like, I train it, with everybody I can possibly find, but not you. <laughs> you got to only train with me. Yeah, don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's no good. Thing. Don't do it. I'll do it, but not you. Oh, it's ridiculous. But it, I think it's appreciated. And I think that's why they come back because, like, wow, you know, this is, this is a really good guy to be with. He's letting me do this. And they're, you know, I, I think they, I think that resonates with students. And I think they actually, instead of leaving, I think that, you know, they even have more respect and admiration for you and they stick around longer, you know? Uh, you know, we talk about martial artists should be loyal to the system, loyal to the instructor. I think it starts with the instructor being loyal to the student. The instructor is mm -hmm. loyal to the student and doing what's best for the student. I mean, how can mm -hmm. you not be loyal back to the instructor? But that doesn't mean only training with the instructor. That means just yeah. like I have students that have long, many, many years ago, went on their own journey, went path. They don't train with me for decades sometimes. And you know what? Every once in a while, they'll write or call or something, or they'll be in Hawaii and they'll visit. And it's wonderful because we mm -hmm. have such a good relationship and they haven't trained with me literally in decades. But it was like I saw them yesterday. It's yeah, it's a really wonderful thing. I'm going to uh, I'm going to in early September. I'm going to see this guy in Hawaii. Oh, in Hawaii? Yeah. Wow. I, I heard what about, uh, the, you know, one of the main islands. This guy. Oahu. Yeah, I guess he does a lot of programs and, you know, so everybody's telling me to go train with him. So I'm, I'm going to see what he's about, you know, so. Yeah, be careful. You know, when people have you come to Hawaii to do training, you know, you just never know. You never know what they really have in mind because they might end up taking you to the beach or something. And it's horrible. Like it's horrible. you would like train on the beach or something like that or. Sometimes, you know, and it's terrible. The sand gets in your feet, you know, it ends up in the car and it's really a bad experience. I really and, that, and the weather, like in the, the really nice weather, too. I mean, like that's that's kind of bad, too. Right. I mean, no, it's really bad. It's really bad. It's like sunny. Like where I am right now, it's very sunny, it's light breeze. Uh, yeah. You don't want to come here, Dean. I'm telling you, you don't want to come here. <laughs> no, I really look forward to having you come out in <laughs> September. We're going to have a good time. I, I know it's a matter of fact, it's going to come by quick. I mean, you know, um, cause it's we only have a I mean, couple months. halfway through June, you know, right. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we only have two and a half months. It's going to be here before we know it. <laughs> this is funny. This is uh, one of my fellow am Amok trainers under Tom Sodas. Tom's awesome. Anybody very, training Amok, you are so lucky. Yeah. You have a great, great trainer there. Yeah. Right? He's, uh, you better come back then. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's oh my funny. gosh! I'm just making sure. I'm just okay. So, I am okay, guy. Oh, I, all right. Thank you, Maestro Alvin. I see your question. I will definitely ask Google Burton that tomorrow. And the, the question is, if, if you want to think uh, think about for tomorrow, is uh, Hawaii FMA. What groups are prominent now? Mm -hmm. uh, that that's his question. We got oh. John Border, Dean is my great Piper instructor in Loburn. Been a big supporter and fan of yours for years, John Border. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, and uh, oh, another favorite of mine, uh, Dr. Kelly Warden. Oh, he's amazing. Uh, Gosh, his, what yeah. a pioneer, a oh, leader. And then some. And, yeah, and he's coming on actually, uh, I'm hoping next week, but he's saying, yo, Burton. <laughs> yeah, yeah, got a couple guys from Europe. Camp years ago it was amazing yeah he's yeah. he's uh done so much in the martial arts world 100 percent. he yeah legendary right legendary yep. absolutely yeah. um wow tons of people saying hi and all that um well great this uh oh renee is really funny he's growling dog dog that dude looks like just like burton richardson does he <laughs> Can you send me a picture? Let me check. <laughs> it is, in fact, the one. 
Oh yeah. Google. Lucky dog. Lucky dog. I am. That was a very good name I was given. Cause I'll tell you. Yeah. I've had lucky. So I don't know if it's, uh, can we even still just call it lucky? I think it's going to be on luck with you. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it is. They should call me blessed dog or something. I don't know. Just, I think we need to change that name. Like, God, it's gone beyond that. But you know Red what? The, dog. <laughs> not like you didn't work for it. You know? No, but yeah, uh, it's yeah. amazing things that have come my way. And again, you know, like the, the beginning, the martial arts whole thing is uh, people would save and save and save and then take a trip from wherever they, you know, across the globe to go mm -hmm. train at the original Kali Academy for a week or maybe two weeks. I mean, that, and then that would be it. They wouldn't be able to do that again for, you know, several years. And mm -hmm. the house I grew up in and was living in was about a mile and a half away from the original Kali Academy. <laughs> Talk about luck. I mean, lucky. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Wow. I did do my effort. I did my part, but the, those opportunities were certain pre certainly presented to me. And then grew down just constantly presenting opportunities. Why did I meet Eric Noss? Because mm -hmm. Eric came to the Inasano Academy. That's why, you know. Another like blessing, luck, slash this, slash that. Oh, here's another great question. And actually I was gonna ask this tomorrow, but it's a it's an easy question. So, and this is from Walter, who was in fact at the seminar when you came to Massachusetts. And his question mm -hmm. is, any chance you coming back out this way? There is a chance, but I don't have any dates set for that. But there is a chance that we would go back to Boston because we and we really enjoyed our time in Boston. And we have a lot more to see in history. OK, and so if you did, amazing. I could coordinate with you to come back out and do even if it was a one day gig, right? No, oh, definitely. Most definitely. Uh, Either one day or two day because I could go out to the bgg fanatics i have a, a program i want to shoot with them anyway so i could just go out there and get that made. Oh, all right so all right walter yeah so i think this could happen oh and uh, okay john border we do yes. miss the mullet i have i'm sorry i'm gonna get you know like an attached attachable one can you, you, know, get, a clip on. Friday, can you get an attachment and just maybe we'll yeah that's that. a good idea yeah maybe just get a clip on and then i can swish my hair and if you just need it for a couple minutes, just a couple minutes. <laughs> oh, Ellie Warden. Burton could have been a professional baseball player. This is this is true. I was you could have. I was recruited, yes, and I decided to do martial arts. I I was sick at the time anyway, um, so yeah, we can talk about that. It's a little bit of a story, but I can definitely you talk catcher, about that. Right? I was a catcher, yes. And do you have any knee any knee issues? Not from that. I have some from jujitsu, but nothing from catching. Well, I'm just curious. I, I knew you were U USC, and I knew you were Division One. Obviously, I knew you did well to get there. Um, I don't want to take a lot of your time, but um, what um, how like what was your batting average? Gosh, I don't know. I I. What was my batting average? I mean, just generally, general. Yeah, like, you know, in the 300s probably, early, like low 300s and all. Yeah, but low when 300s I in, is... Yeah, it was pretty good. Um, I was a good catcher, but I lost interest because I didn't, I didn't enjoy baseball. It was something that I was kind of forced to do. But since I was forced to do it, I really applied myself. Then when I went to college, I just didn't have the drive uh, to do it anymore because my father said hey you're going to college i'm going to be hands off you do whatever you want i'm just hands off now but for example in high school uh american legion ball which is only it's probably 16 games in the summer probably but i batted 500 my senior year yeah i actually batted 500 for 16 games and then in uh high school for the entire high school season i my senior year i batted 444 um so I remember that clearly. Then that's I was in incredible. college and I just. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah, wow. I, was, yeah. I practiced I mean, I played, a lot. I played lacrosse in college, but it was nothing oh, yeah. to the magnitude that you did. I mean, so, okay, you're playing. So you're, you're getting um, scouts, obviously. 
They yeah. Were, so and, yeah, they wanted me to sign, and actually, I I was scouted out of high school. They wanted me to go directly into the minor leagues out of high school, but I refused that. I was going to college, and then after college, uh, I didn't even finish all my years of playing baseball. After three years, uh, I was having all these digestive issues and all that, and I just didn't enjoy it. I said, you know, that's it. I'm not even going to play anymore. And then the scouts came to me and said, hey, why don't you sign with us? Because you're not going to play in college. Come sign with us and we'll pay you to play baseball and this and that. But I just didn't have any interest. No anymore. regrets, though? No regrets? You're like, oh, no, zero. Zero. Okay. Hey, you know what? That's all that matters. If you have no regrets no. and you're happy with the path you chose. Oh, my gosh. I'm so happy with this path. Yeah. I think of all the people I, like you, Dean, I'm sure I wouldn't have met you if I went that baseball route yeah. by Can you say that again, just far as me, far as I go? <laughs> you know, I had a vision when the scouts were talking to me about going to baseball or not. And when I had that or not, there was this vision of this, this guy named Dean. And I thought if I go this past someday, I'm going to meet Dean. So that's what happened. That's, that's how I made. <laughs> no, but, but seriously, actually hundred percent seriously. Yeah. You know, the people I've met, the friends I have, the experiences in mm. martial arts, I mean, you just can't, you I cannot know. substitute that. For, I mean, how do you like, how do you replace that? You know what I mean? Like can't. I look at like through FMA discussion, the people I've met, like Renee, this guy here, I mean, you know, through here meeting Tom and John Kuspis and those, I mean, you're, it's in, you can't, how do you replace that? Like there's no dollar figure you know what i yeah. mean like these interpersonal relationships and uh or through hitting one another <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> you know i really like you can i try to hit you in the head <laughs> i know that's like big john like six eight 280 pounds grappling with a knife really fun <laughs> oh that sounds extraordinary wonderful <laughs> sign me up <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah but really I'll, all the time i i've been able to spend with Guru Dan in Asanto, yeah. Paul de Tours, Master Chai, Herman Sawanda, Edgar Suliti, you know, all just on and on, Ta Tong, and just gosh, then then the whole MMA world. That and entire then, yeah, you got to work with people MMA. and train them. Jeez. Yep. And you know, screaming at the top of your lungs for your fighter to pull on the head because he's got a triangle and you realize they're 14,000 people screaming in the Madison Square Garden. There's nowhere he's going to hear you. And there's only, you know, 30 seconds left in the match. And then he pulls the head down and you're like, yes, the training came out. And yeah. then later he tells you, no, I heard you. I heard you say, pull the head. That's why I pulled the head. It's just, you know, that, wow. these little moments that are uh, surreal. Yeah, surreal, right? It's just really, I'm very, very fortunate. And more to come, yeah. a lot more to come. Yeah, and Kelly... Burton taught with Maurice Smith, Bob Anderson, Jim Keating at Warriors Retreat. Wow. I did. And that was a great, what a great experience. And Kelly, thank you so much for inviting me because, you know, just recently I came across the photo. I was looking through some photos that yeah. I, and I found the photo with Maurice Smith. And I think I found the group. Did I find the group photo? If Kelly, if you have that group photo, maybe you can, uh, Oh, uh, or something because that, that what what a memorable experience that was. That was he's just fantastic. Such a, um, he was so kind enough to invite me to share. Um, I just can't because I'm gonna, you know, going um, seeing you, um, and all that. But I hope next year I can have the opportunity to go out there. He's just somebody I really want definitely. to meet. Um, I just definitely I, go out if you can if you can go out there and anybody listening if you can go train at that retreat or anytime you can train with Kelly Warden, just go do it. You're yeah. I can't, I'm looking off. forward to it. Yeah. yeah he's somebody on the bucket list to meet. And, uh, Mike Raymond, six, eight. Yes. Uh, Medusa. Yeah. That was a big, uh, I'm just making sure I'm not just any kind comments towards you. I'm just not making sure I'm not missing. Uh, Renee. Yes. It was, it wasn't crafty dog. No, <laughs> not Mark. It was definitely burden. Uh, as far as a college and potential professional uh, career. Crafty, uh, I think was in New York at the time. Columbia? He was a lawyer. Or being the lawyer, right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, this, I, I tell you, this test run, I, 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 uh, what I do is I, um, 
I download a few of the test runs that I really that people love and put them on the channel. I think this is going to make that. I'm just saying. Maybe we'll see, but I hope <laughs> I hope it's helpful. Just shooting the breeze here, and we'll do more on Friday. We'll yeah, bring your questions, whatever. Uh, Absolutely. You know, again, uh, trying to follow the example of Guru Dan. Uh, really, I'm here to help. And it might sound sappy, but you know what? I'm sappy. That's just who I am. You know, <laughs> I'm just, yeah. that's just who I am. But really, I just want to help. So if I can help other people on this path, because it's been so, so wonderful for me, the things I've gone through. He found, I have the photo and he's going to send it to you. Uh, Kelly. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. So, all right. Can you just stick on the, I just got a couple quick things run by. Yep. Can you, okay. For sure. I'm just going to close out. So folks, yes, if you were watching. You got Friday. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Guru Burn is good uh, Friday, three o'clock. If you got questions for him, please you can send them to me or you can send them to Guru and we'll be sure to get them asked. All right. Uh, without further ado, guys, I'm going to put Guru uh, Burton on the bottom. I do have a couple things. And don't worry, you're putting in the dungeon, but don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> you won't Ooh. be forgotten. <laughs> All right. I'm going to see you in a bit. Okay. Hold on. Okay. All right, folks, yes, to wrap up, uh, I'm definitely going to be uh, recording this test run. This is absolutely one of the better ones. So hopefully I will see you folks at Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, it's the best stories about Richard. Oh, yeah. Okay. Awesome, Dean. Yeah, uh, absolutely, Walter. Uh, hopefully you guys can jump in, you and John and Mark. And, uh, yeah, hopefully you can as well. Uh uh, Mike Raymond. Okay. All right, guys. And Kelly Warren, I'll close out saying. Okay. Oh, and uh, Dr. Kelly, uh, I'm hoping next week to get you on, uh, but I'll uh, I'll message you. All right, folks. Uh, we'll see you Friday.